Welcome back to the Chad Easty Show, News Talk KFYO. Joining me right now from the West Texas Friday Night Scoreboard Show, which you can hear right here on KFYO tonight, Stephen Orr. Hey, Stephen, what's going on? Uh, just um, going through playoff scenarios, believe it or not. Are we? Uh, are the playoffs? I mean, are, are the playoff teams pretty much set? Are we going to decide anything uh, this um, weekend? You're going to see. Some, I mean, you've got some teams playing for their playoff lives. You've got a lot of teams uh, that are playing for seeding. Um, it, it just varies by district. Some things are pretty cut and dried again, and some, uh, depending on how things go and how balanced the district is, it can really be uh, still wide open and down come down to the wonderful plus minus uh, points at the end of the night. And I'm not smart enough to figure out how that goes by half the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, how does it how does it look for some of our local teams? Well, uh, when we look at the districts um, in your area, you know, in our area, uh, starting off with District Two of Six A, that one's pretty much uh, cut and dried as far as friendship is not is out of the playoffs. Uh, they're zero and four in district play. They play Amarillo Tasco, so they host them tonight. But friendship actually can play a role in how the playoffs play out because if they were to beat Amarillo Tascosa and should Midland Lee beat Odessa Permian, that would affect the seeding uh, for Division Two out of the six A. Is as you as you know for six A, they still uh, split up into Division One and Two at the end of the year versus the other district. So uh, you'll have Odessa Permian that will come out if they beat Midland Lee tonight. They have an outright district championship. Um, should Midland Lee upset Permian and move to four and one in district and Tasco to beat Friendship, you've got a three way tie. But it doesn't matter because they divide those schools based on population. Permian and uh, the big game in the district is actually for the fourth place. Where Midland High and Odessa High play, both are one and three in district play. The winner of that ball game takes the final playoff spot out of District Two. But either one of those would also be in Division One as a larger population school. So we know that Tascosa and Midland Lee are going to be in Division Two. We just don't know exactly how that's going to play out as far as seating. Again, I think Tascosa probably takes care of their business. Uh, against Friendship, but Friendship can play the spoiler row there. Drop down into District 2 of 5A Division 1. Uh, this is the district with Lubbock Coronada. The the playoff teams are set. It's going to be Coronada, Amarillo, Caprock, Abilene, Cooper, and Amarillo High School. But Coronada playing Caprock tonight. Coronada can get the outright district championship with the win. Uh, but should Amarillo Caprock beat Coronada and Abilene Cooper take care of their business against Amarillo High School, you have a three-way tie uh, for a district championship there. Also, should Amarillo High upset Cooper, it can cause some things to kind of mess up as far as seeding. But really, I think uh, the big deal is Emerald, Lubbock Coronado is going to have to take care of their business tonight as Coach Parr takes on his old team, Emerald Caprock, uh, for a district championship. Should be a great ball game. You've got Lubbock High and Lubbock Monterey finishing out the season. Um, Lubbock High looking for their first district win there. And, uh, you know, either team wanting to just build some momentum and kind of transition into next year. Uh, but that's a good district race as well. Drop down into District 3 of 5A Division 2. Uh, Lubbock Cooper, the Pirates, 9-0 and on the year, 4-0 in district play. Take Travel up to the Amarillo area to take on Canyon Randall. Randall is 4-5 and overall, or Four and five on the year, but they're three and one in district play, and uh, this is another one of those games where the team, the playoff teams in this district are set with Randall Cooper, Wichita Falls Rider, and Wichita Falls High School. Uh, but should and Cooper pretty much has the number one seed showed up unless they lose to Canyon Randall by fifteen points and Wichita Falls uh, are. High defeats Ryder, and it can throw some things there. But uh, pretty much looks like what you'll have is Lubbock Cooper um, and Randall playing for one and two, and then Wichita Falls High School and Wichita Falls Ryder playing for three and four. Another game here in the district, the two teams finishing out. Plainview High School travels down to Abilene to take on Abilene Wiley. Uh, Plainview is one and eight on the year, 0 and four in district. Abilene Wiley 0 and nine, and 0 and four in district. The last time Abilene High Wiley. Uh, did not win a game in a season was 1982. So wow. they're trying to keep from going over, and a team that has had a storied playoff history in 4A, the transition to 5A has been a little rough, uh, but they sure would like to finish with a win there. When we move to District 2 of 4A Division I, uh, uh, the district championship game tonight played between 
Andrews and Seminole there at the Wigwam in Seminole. Uh, Andrews 7-2 and two on the year 2-0 and oh in district. Seminole is 5-3 and three and 2-0. and oh. uh, The other two teams in the district, San Angelo, Lakeview, and Big Spring, was played last night, and Lakeview gets the win there, 35-20. to 20, So they'll be the three seed. And ironic, or not ironically, but incidentally, uh, San Angelo Lakeview, that was their first district win since 2015. Wow. So a big win for them as they go in third place. But, uh, again, the Andrews Seminole game, Seminole's going to have their hands full tonight with a very powerful Andrews offense. Uh, but Seminole has been playing very strong of late, so that should be a great ball game. You drop into District 1 of 4A Division 2, and uh, Midland Greenwood in the barn, they've already got the district championship. They're 6-0. and Snyder is locked in in second place. They play a winless Pecos team tonight are winless in district, so Snyder has the number two seed locked up. The interesting thing here is can uh, Fort Stockton at three and two beat La Mesa two and three? La Mesa could, if they were to win that game, could throw the district into or the bottom part there into a tie and some tiebreaker scenarios, but uh, they're going to have to play a good game against the Panthers in that one. We drop down to District 2 of 4A, Division 2, and we saw a dandy of a district championship played last night in Lubbock as the Level End Lobos come into town and get away with a seven-point win there, and they're the district champions of District 2 of 4A, Division 2. Lubbock Estacada's in second place in, in that district. Uh, Dalhart has already finished their season. They'll come out in third, and then Borger and Perryton both one and eight on the year, zero oh and three in district play. The winner of that ball game gets to go to the playoffs. Hmm. So that's another one of those that I don't need to talk about. <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> uh, yeah, we don't want to do that. Okay, all right. But move down. They're to winners. The well, everybody gets a ribbon. That's right, exactly. <laughs> and uh, we'll see how their playoff game goes. Uh, District 2, 3A Division 1, this has got a dandy of a game tonight in Slayton where the Shallow Water Mustangs, 9-0 and in the year, 4-0 in district play. Coach Brian Wood has that team rolling. Slayton, one of the better teams that they've had in a long time. They're 7-2, and 3-1. and They lost their game against Bushland. But should Slayton pull the upset over Shallow Water and Bushland take care of a 1-8 and Mule Shoe team, you could have a three-way tie at the top of that district. If not, uh, Shallow Water should be the would be your district championship out, champion outright. Bushland looks to be poised to take the two seed. Slayton would be the three seed, and then you've got a mess at the bottom with one and three Mule Shoe, one and three Littlefield, and zero and four River Road. If Littlefield wins their ball game, they'll take that fourth slot. If River Road beats Littlefield and um, by more than eleven, then River Road could get in. And Muleshoe is going to have to pull an upset over Bushland to find their way into the playoffs, and I don't see that happening. Again, you have a lot of scenarios, but when you look at this district, I think it's pretty simple. Uh, the Slayton Shallow Water game should be a really good game, uh, but if it falls like I think it will, it'll be Shallow Water, Slayton, Bushland, and Littlefield heading to the playoffs. You got another dandy of a ball game just up the road uh, where the Abernathy Antelopes at eight and one on the year, four zero in district play. Uh, take uh, they host the Idaloo Wildcats who are three and one in district play. Abernathy with the win in that ball game can seal up an outright district championship. If Idaloo can get, pull off the upset there, you very well could have a three way tie as Colorado City plays uh Owen for Stanton and I think Colorado City will take care of that one pretty handily. So Idaloo has a chance there to claim a, a part of a district championship. Both teams playing really well. Uh, I think at the end of the day, Abernathy's defense proves to be a little too much, but uh, that that could be a really good ball game. And then you've got uh, Lubbock Roosevelt traveling down to Cahoma. The winner of that ball game will claim the last playoff spot in District Two of Three A Division Two. Drop down to two District Two of Two A Division One. Another barn burner of a district championship tonight. Eight and one, four and zero Sundown takes on eight and zero, four and zero New Deal in New Deal. For a district championship, uh, New Deal ranked number three in the state, Sundown ranked number five in the state, uh, both playing outstanding football. And I think that's going to be a barn burner of a game for uh, one and two and for an outright district championship. Then you have Post coming to Floyd Data, both of these teams, two and two in district play. The winner here will seal up the third place uh, seed, and, and of course the other would be the fourth place seed. So cut and dried playoff deal. Everybody's just playing for seeding, but uh, a couple of really good ball games. In that district, we drop down to District 4 of 2A Division 2, and that has district leader Rawls at 8-1. and one. They're 4-0 on the year. They're going to be your number one seed. They take on a 1-3 and three 
new home team. Uh, Lockney and Crosbyton playing. Lockney's at 0-4, Crosbyton at 1-3. and Your Smyer and Tahoka play in Tahoka tonight, and uh, the Battle of the Bulldogs there. Both of those teams, 3-1 and in district play. That will settle uh, second and third seeding. Should Lockney upset Crosbyton and New Home lose to Rawls, you've got a three-way tie for that fourth-place spot. If New Home could pull uh, the upset over Rawls, they could punch their ticket to the playoffs. Crosbyton, likewise, with a win. Over, if they beat Lockney, they're in, though, because they, they have the head-to-head over New Deal. But some, some suspense there at the bottom. But I think at the end of the day, it comes out pretty cut and dried there. Lubbock Trinity Christian and Lubbock Christian are playing for a district championship tonight in Lubbock. Uh, both teams are 2-2 two and two in district play. Trinity Christian 4-4 four and four on the year. Lubbock Christian 5-4 and four on the year. They're very evenly matched and that ought to be a dandy of a ball game. Real quickly jumping into some six-man action. Uh, Nazareth and Petersburg face off tonight in Petersburg. Nazareth is 7-1 and one on the year. 3-0 and oh in district play taking on a Petersburg team that's 7-2 and two and 3-0 and oh for the outright district championship. And in six-man, remember, there's only two teams from each district that go to the playoffs. So that's sealed up, but you're playing for seeding and you're playing for a district championship. Another uh, big ball game has Ropesville taking on Wellman Union in Ropes tonight. Ropesville's 5-3 and three on the year. 3-0 and oh in district play. Wellman Union is 2-1 and one on the year. Uh, Morton already in the barn with a 3-1 and one district record. So uh, if Ropesville takes care of business tonight, like I believe they will, that, that deal is sewn up. And then uh, Silverton and Motley County in District 2 of 1A Division 2, uh, both teams 2-0 and oh in district play. That's for an outright district championship as well. And uh, they're both, te- both of those teams, again, in the playoffs. And then real quickly, uh, Whit Harrell. 9-0-1 oh, on the year, 4-0 oh, in district. They've finished their season already. They've got the district championship in District 3 of 1A Division 2. Uh, Anton takes on Cotton Center tonight. Anton seem, has their, their fate wrapped up as well, uh, as they'll be the two seed out of that district. And uh, so, you know, that's about what it looks like. But there's a lot of, a lot yeah. of good playoff football going on tonight. Uh, what are one or two games that people really need to check out? Uh, I think Coronado Caprock is going to be a barn burner. I think uh, Lubbock Cooper and Randall has some potential. I'm really big on the shallow water Slayton game. I think that could be a great one. Idaloo Abernathy is another one. Sundown New Deal, Nazareth Petersburg. I've got, got about seven within 50 miles of Lubbock that are going to be dandy barn burner games. All right. Uh, soon we'll visit with you next week and find out what the entire playoff picture does look like. All right, Chad. We appreciate it. All right. Thank you. That's Stephen Orr with the West Texas Friday Night Scoreboard Show, which you can hear on KFYO tonight at 10 p.m.